past 1 a.m. and I'm Father John Murray, the Reverend of Rock and Roll. I'm having a good time tonight. How about you? Whoa, a report of flying saucers right here in Mayfield. Jennifer Davis saw something while sitting atop her very own UFO tower, probably the third time this week. Though. So don't worry, folks. I don't think the Martians have landed yet. Uh, one last item. I need a favor. Could somebody tell my little sister to leave the front door lock? Because... I, uh, sort of forgot my key. Appreciate it, y'all. And now, listen. Before all of me, before all of me, I think I'm all alone. Well, it's hard to do. Hey, there she is. You hey, Carla. Me with just Hi, Amy. John said you're supposed to leave your door unlocked. I know. I, I know. Stay out late, have a party time. Baby, give it to me straight. What will I do now, honey, to make you change your mind? Carla! I John forgot his FBI, keys! CIA, really? And the FCC. Hey, sweetheart. They said Pass me a beer up here. Where you went, my darling. <laughs> you moron, Daddy. <laughs> so I did, yeah. Whatever you say, <laughs> Sam. They said so. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, John said to tell you to leave the front door unlocked. Yeah, Thanks, Paul. Well, since your door's gonna be open, Carla, my sweet, just might drop in later tonight. I just might set the dogs on you, Danny. Hi, Steph. Hi, Mia. I didn't know you were back in town. Yeah, I bet, bitch. Hi, Steph. Bye. What was that all about? Oh, she's one of those poor, immoral girls. She thinks you told your brother about her abortion. I told him. I didn't even know. Is it that Larry guy? Oh, sick. Mm-hmm. Here, Paul. Have one of Steph's beers. I think it's getting pretty dull around here. Thanks. I never told John about anybody I know. I hate that. I wonder how he found out. I told him. Told him what? Nothing. You told him? Oh, so that's what you've been doing cooped up alone with my brother all those nights. I thought you were having an affair. I thought about that, too. But I've got my eye on another old man. Yeah, I know. Hey, Paul, this crazy girl is madly in love with Carla. All right. But I think it's preposterous. So, how long have you been spying for John? Bet you're damn good at it, too. Amen. You shut up. I might tell him about you next, Paul. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> you couldn't dig up anything about Paul. He's a faculty child. <laughs> They're perfect. Hey, now this next song's for old Bill's UFO. Happy landings, whoever you are. Faculty child, why are you so glassy-eyed? Nothing. Just thought I saw something weird on the way out here. <laughs> oh, 
boy. Carla, you didn't see anything? No. Really, huh? Carla, I think you're supposed to, to leave my door unlocked. Yeah, I know. I've heard it 19 times. Look, I better go. Goodbye, 007 spy. Bye, Paul. See you at school. Bye. Oh, and Carla. Yeah? Don't forget to leave the door unlocked. Funny. Forget it, Danny. Gonna go for it, man? Mine. What do you think you're doing here? Oh, your door was unlocked? Yeah, I know. There's no one out here but this cute fuzzy... Oh, hey, that's my cat. Look, who are you? I'm sorry, we didn't know anyone was home. My name is Violet. These are my friends. Are you Carla Murray? Yeah, maybe. Why? This was delivered to us by mistake. We want to return it. This old magazine? My aunt got me the subscription. I never really read this junk. We were sort of hoping you could explain some of it. You don't look like you need anything explained. What do you mean? You see, we're from out of town. We were hoping you could give us some pointers, help us fit in. Me? Give you pointers? About what? You know, boys. You go to Mayfield High, don't you? We're starting there on Monday. About those boys. You see, in the magazine it said... You must have had some sheltered upbringing. Look, I wouldn't take this stuff too seriously. What do you mean? Do you think we'll have much trouble getting boyfriends? No, you won't have any trouble. Really? Do you think it'd be all right if I wore this to school? What about... Do you think my hair... Now, wait just a minute. <laughs> this is really fun and everything. But it's two o'clock in the morning. How about if I just see you at school Monday, okay? Hey, sis. Hi. Uh, these are some friends that just dropped by. They're new in town. This is my brother, John. Hi. 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 <laughs> well, see you Monday. Bye. Thank you. Weird little chicks. Oh, really? In what way? <sighs> yeah. I'm going to bed. Be sure you lock the door, huh? Signing for me in study hall today. <laughs> oh, good morning, Carla. 
Morning, Mr. Morley. How was your weekend? Pretty good. Well, pretty bizarre, actually. You know, my son Paul got home rather late Friday night. Mr. Morelli, I have absolutely nothing to do with how late your son Paul gets home. Would you quit trying to matchmake us? <laughs> Sorry. He, he's not so bad, though, is he? I mean, um, I always sort of liked him. Yeah? Well, I sort of like him, too. you quit looking at me like that? Go away, Mr. Morelli. Okay. Okay. Uh, class will be short today because of the quiz. Pass these back. When you get yours, you may begin. Yes. May I help you? I'll be joining your class, Mr. Morelli. What's your name? It's Zodi. Uh, sit down, okay? As soon as the quiz is over, I'll get you your books and so forth. I'll sit here by my friend, Carla. Don't laugh, you dildos. In my opinion, any one of you could get anything he wants from any one of you. So just go for it, Miller. Yeah, have you seen the one in the red? Right, he spent the entire history class staring at her ass. <laughs> Probably drooling, too. Oh, fuck you, Miller! <laughs> hey, aren't you guys forgetting something? Like Kathy, Linda, Amy Dennis? Really? How about you? What's Julie gonna say about that lovely pink ass you're so interested in? Nothing if she doesn't find out about it. <laughs> There's no way she won't find out. Now me, I don't get myself into that sort of binding relationship. Well, I wasn't exactly planning on dumping old cat. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you. I wouldn't want that chick mad at me. So who do you like? Hey <laughs> man, I, I'll get around to them all in time. But right now, I put, I'm up against something a little more challenging. I'm asking out Carla Murray Friday night. And I'll get some from her, too. Carla? She's too smart. You mean she's too nice? You don't have a chance, man. Can I tell you guys, I'm gonna do it. Sorry, Danny. She's already going out this Friday night with me. Oh, yeah? So we're gonna take her? I don't know. Maybe I'll take her dancing. Maybe you'll break your foot. Maybe you'll break his face. Hey! Hey, there's a girl in here! <whistles> Jesus Christ! I'm sorry. I thought this was the other locker room. No, uh, it's, it's this one. You know the one that says boys in big letters on the front door? Hey, it's a natural mistake. Sure. Shut your fucking mouth, Morelli. Well, I guess I'll have to try again. I sure hope I can find it. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> you can have Carla. She's all yours. OK, uh, time's up. Pass them down here. As soon as I get yours, you can leave. Uh, Carla, would you uh, do me a favor? You show Zodi where we are in the concept book? Yeah, sure.
Oh, thanks. You okay? Better than last time, anyway. All that tutoring really helped. Good. Mr. Morelli, mm -hmm. I'm going to be aggressive now. Do you mind? Well, that depends, young lady. I want you to notice me. Haven't you noticed me already, Mr. Morelli? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, sh I should have noticed this sooner, I see. Oh, look, Steph... Mm. I don't want to be insensitive to your feelings. I, I, re I really am very flattered. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, you, you, you'd better drop this whole thing right now. Mr. Morelli, I love you. Oh, Stephanie, you have annoyed the hell out of me for a month now with all this extra tutoring. I am not interested in this little situation you've set up. Now, I am sorry to be so abrupt. I mean, I know I should be talking about psychology and father complexes. You bastard! I ought to, but I'm not, because you're a conniver, Stephanie, and a dangerous one at that. If you were thinking more about consequences and less about your biological impulses... Well, let's uh, see this book. It's uh, chapter 12, up to page uh, 247 by Monday. Uh, did you have a different book at your old school? No old school. here to answer your questions. Why are you doing this to me? dolled up for the big date tonight? That shirt? What's wrong with it? Little sister, you look like a construction worker. <laughs> it's only Paul Morelli. He's not kidding. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone like Danny Pierce might care what I was wearing. Paul wouldn't. Oh. Well, who'd you rather look nice for? Some grimy little status seeker like Danny Pierce? Or someone like Paul? <laughs> you don't like Danny, do you? Do you? No, uh, but it was sort of fun when he was after me. He's not after you anymore. Huh? No, he's not. Pardon me. How come? Oh, competition. One of the new girls went for him. Just like they gone for practically every guy who's older than 15 and isn't in the chess club. These little vixens are really turning things upside down over there, huh? Vixens is right. John, it's hysterical. They've been at it all week. Yeah? It's like a race to see how many of the cute guys they can steal. Even guys like Pete Martinson. They are, I guess, unable to resist the vixen's charms. Well, it's a good thing Paul Morelli's in the chess club. Amusing. How's this? Better. Have a nice time.
What do you think of this? You've changed your clothes six times. You look fine. Just relax, Paul. Dad, I'm not the kind of guy who can get by on personality alone. I need all the help I can get. Which side should I put my hair on? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> do you think I need to shower again? You better change back into the red shirt. You change those clothes one more bloody time, and I will refuse to give you the car keys. Come on, son. Carla's not going to care what you're wearing. Mm. All right. Put on the red shirt. Decided on this one. Gotta go. All right. Have fun. Thanks. You too, Dad. Oh, I'm sure I'll have a wonderful time. Ah, uh, Dad, somebody to see you. Oh, great. Hi, Mr. Morelli. I need you to help me with my biology. Oh. Um, well... Um, don't worry, I'm leaving. I'm sure you two will get it all straightened out. I have just a few questions. Landers keeps us some of these bottom drawers here anyway. Danny, I can't believe you got the keys to this place. This is great. It just takes a little finesse, my dear. You're very talented. How perceptive of you. Oh. Listen, baby, uh, I don't I don't want to give you the idea I'm trying to rush you or anything. I'm not I'm not trying to I, I'm not trying to seduce you, so so you don't have to be scared. Be gentle. On old Miss Lander's desk? Laying in the pine trees. It's a beautiful Buzzing night. Like a we could still make the movie if you want. That's okay. Are you sure? The attack of the flesh eating gladiators from beyond the stars could be good. <laughs> no, really. This is nice. You like those science fiction things, huh? Yeah, well. After that UFO stuff the other night, you probably think I'm nuts about it. Mm, not necessarily. Paul, I talked to John. He said people really did report a UFO that night. What did you think you saw? Well, you know the old school up out near the power station. One night, I thought I saw some things coming down. <laughs> no, come on, I'm serious. They look like different color lights. Kind of like your socks? <clears throat> Oops. <laughs> no, seriously. What are you doing at the power station anyway? Trying to find where the bunch of you had your cars. What did Stephanie do? Change it every week? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to see you there that night. I've never really been part of Steph's crowd. I know faculty child. Doesn't drink, smoke, swear, or think impure thoughts about girls, right? <laughs> don't you? Well, I don't drink or smoke. You swear, huh? Hell, shit. And what about impure thoughts? Uh, I uh, only think those about impure girls. <laughs> A likely story. I suppose every guy in school is thinking about those new vixenish girls. What do you think about them anyway? I wish they'd go back where they came from. Why? <laughs> because they're too sexy. No, no, not to me. I don't like that kind of girl, Carl. I, it's my dad. He's alone with one of them right now, and I think he's going to get himself in trouble. He'll end up going to bed with her, I suppose. Mr. Morelli? Which one? 
Is it Zodi? If that's the one who wears black, I'm sick of girls falling for my father. I suppose you know that Stephanie... I knew. How did you find out? How did I find out? Uh, two days ago, she offered me $20 to leave Dad's bedroom window unlatched and spend the night at her friend's house. <laughs> Subtle there, Steph. <laughs> She's getting desperate. Mm, she better not find out about Zodi or there'll be murder. Hey, look. Why would he do this with Zodi if he wouldn't with Steph? You've got to admit that those are the most highly sexed girls you've ever seen. I think that's the only reason they came here, listening to some of those guys talk about Paul, they're weird. What about the way they just showed up? I tried to find out where they live. Nobody knows. Not even the school. What if they are staying in that house out by the power station? What if they did come down in your UFO? Um, Carla... Well, what do you think? I think you have outer space on the brain. It's space sickness you need. An emergency Morelli mind lock. Yes, I feel your thoughts are. Thoughts are one. All right. Be narrow-minded. I just have a better imagination. That's all. Our thoughts are one. Paul Morelli? You've got to be kidding, Carla. What did you do? Just drove around and talked. It was nice. Sounds great. So, did anything happen? No, Steph. I kissed him. Oh, my God. Was he a good kisser? You were his first. <laughs> Poor old Paul, the virgin next door. But hey, hey, listen to who I saw last night. Oh, boy. Let's hear it. Well... Mike and friends were out with the new girls again. I'd hate to be those guys if Kathy and Linda found out what's been going on. You're not planning on telling them, are you? Mm. Nah, I guess that would be a little too low. <laughs> but those girls... Vixens. Vixens are a little too successful to suit me. Afraid they might move in on your territory? No, I'm not worried about that. It's going to take something more sophisticated to get Morelli. Zodi seems to be doing all right. What do you mean? Oops. <laughs> Maybe this one better be safe for a rainy day. No, really. I think I'd better hear this. Well, I heard that Zodi was over at Mr. Morelli's house last night. You heard? From Paul, I suppose. Look, Steph, don't go getting mad. I look pretty ridiculous, don't I? You know, I'm not going to let this go by, Carla. Oh, dear. Where are the rest of the guys? How come you're hanging around here? Nothing else to do. What happened to that little purple friend of yours? Yeah, I don't know. After what you did last night, are you sure you don't want some more? You appear to have some information about last night. What happened to our deal? I'm messing around in my business. Remember? Don't get mad. Tell me why you aren't with her tonight, though. Any of your damn business? Oh, Danny, I'm sure it's my business. She's not your kind of girl or something? She went off in a weird direction, that's all. Well, at least she went off. Think that's funny? But she, she really went off, Steph, like she was having a fit or something. Lots of them do that, didn't you know? I know, Steph. It is. What'd she do? God, I don't know how she did it. She must have been a gymnast. What'd she do? <laughs> not gymnastics. More like trampoline training. Danny! Hey, I'm not going into details, wench. They're embarrassing. But from now on, my women are going to be... A little, uh, less experienced? Like Carla? Yeah. So when are you going to get me through to that chick? I thought you were going to pave the way for me. I tried hard. But, uh, didn't you hear? Carla and Paul Morelli. Too bad. She really went out with that bastard. I never thought he'd be competition for you. That son of a bitch. Poor you. Now you haven't got either of them. 
What's the matter, losing your touch? Hey, it's not my fault Carla doesn't have any taste. And that nympho stuff's just not my style. I want to run things to catch. Ooh, sounds like your macho's been bruised. Lay off. Hey, don't get mad. I'm on your side, remember? I don't like these vixens anymore, and you do. I'll tell you what, Danny. You can help me with something on Monday. Is it legal? Yes, Danny. I'll talk to you later. I saw him at the movies last night. Susie doesn't know who he was with. Which one was it? Oh, you know, it's the one that wears the tacky pink. Her? She's in my algebra. So is Rick. I know. She asked him out, what do you bet? Right under Susie's nose. I think you better forget what's been going on under your noses and take a look at what's been happening behind your backs. What? What's been happening to who? To you all. When was the last time you went out with Mike? last week, I think. Where's Pete tonight, Amy? What's been keeping him so busy? He's not busy. Just lately, he's been so tired. What are you getting at, Steph? You really don't know what your precious boyfriends have been up to, do you? Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but my guy never steps out of line. At least he'd better not. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to do you a favor. If you're so sure, forget it. Wait a minute. No, 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 you don't want to hear. Never mind. All right, Steph, hear what? What do you know? Rick's not the only one who's been getting it from one of the new girls. So's Pete and Steve and half the rest of the guys in school. Not Pete. Oh, ask him. Ask him where he was last night. Melvin wouldn't do anything like that. You're right, honey. You're Melvin's safe. But the rest of you ought to know where you stand. As long as these new girls are around, you can forget about your boyfriends. Hey, Morelli. Must we be subjected so early in the week? I don't see it. I mean, I just can't see it. Can you? A respected bio teacher, a dirty old ledge. What the hell are you babbling about? Oh, I do apologize, old boy. Your father's been jumping his students, and the school board just found out about it. It's off. He's sure to be suspended. How'd you hear? Hi, Paul. Saw your date go with Carla Friday night. I'll just leave you two alone. <laughs> okay, Paul, what's going on? I'm kind of surprised you even have to ask. I don't know what you're talking about. What was Danny saying? Seems the whole school knows now. Knows what? About my dad, about the girl. Oh, shit. Look. I'm sorry, Paul. I didn't mean it to get out. Look, I saw Morelli coming out of the principal's office this morning. You could tell. He's out on his ass. It's unreal. Gross. Steph, I've been looking for you all day. I've been busy. That's all I've heard. Hey, what's your problem? Look, it's not funny this time. Mr. Morelli's in serious trouble because of you. Well, um, see you later. I don't see what it matters to you. If I hadn't told you what Paul said. Oh, Paul thinks you're to blame, huh? <laughs> don't tell me you're serious about him. I might have been, but I can forget it now. You're really tacky, Stephanie. All Zodi did was exactly what you were planning to do. She just had better luck with it. You turned Mr. Morelli in because you're jealous. Well, from now on, Zodi and the rest of your little sexy friends are going to find it a hell of a lot harder to get everything they want. What do you mean? What are you planning now? They'll find out soon enough. Well, look who's here. Hey, hi, Steph. Uh, hi there, Linda. How's it going? Steve, I've missed you. What you been up to? Oh, not too much. You missed me, huh? 
Yeah, I really did. You hot from all that running? <laughs> she always acts this way. I'll cool you off. <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pete, maybe you'd better explain. Hey, what's with all of you? You want to screw something that just crawled out of a puddle of mascara, you could at least have the decency to break up with me first. Oh, Linda? You're all a bunch of royal shit. And if you think you're going to get away with it, you're a bunch of royal jackasses, too. Don't move. Good idea, Todd. We better not move. All right. If you want to have anything more to do with me, you tell that oversexed pom-pom girl goodbye. And that goes for the rest of the guys, too. Men. What he did wouldn't shock many students, but it sure as hell might offend some parents. With this in mind, the school board suspended Jack Morelli from the faculty at Mayfield High. Paul, I'm going out to look for Zodi. Dad, you're in trouble already. Can't you control yourself? You gotta stay away from her. Oh, no. It's not to satisfy my overwhelming sexual urges, as you seem to think. <laughs> this is important. You're about to tell me you're in love with her. No. I don't give a damn about her. She's nothing. Listen, Paul. She's not here alone. Those teenage vixens are just newer models of a car I should have bought 16 years ago. Illuminate your words on my father so that I may also know what the hell you're talking about. The girl who was your mother is here, along with a new crop of beauties. That's the girl I'm in love with. I want to see her. Why? I don't know. I, I want to apologize. I want to find out what's happened to her. Why didn't she stay back then? I told her to go. I was afraid of being found out. She loved me, but I had to save my reputation. You lost it now, huh, Dad? And Zodi definitely wasn't worth it. An irresistible seductress, not much else. Just like all the rest of them. I hope uh, you haven't gone down the garden path with any of them. That's not my type, Dad. Good. Because there's one thing I haven't told you about them yet. Like what? Like where they're from. Where they're from. As long as you don't tell me they came down in flying saucers. Did you say something? Not me. Are you serious? Yes, Paul, I am serious. They came from outer space. And they can be dangerous. They're used to getting their own way, and when they don't, they fly into tantrums like children. Gee, this is just like in the movies, where all the aliens are beautiful women, and of course they just happen to speak English. Well, it's not that far-fetched. I know it's hard to believe, son, but it's true. I've got to figure out where to find them. Well, hey, if you go to that old school near the power station, you might find your aliens. I saw a UFO there once. Do you think they might be there? Carla thinks so. You two have a fight or something? That she got you suspended. She was the one who reported you. Who told you that? It's not true. You know, Stephanie Miles reported me. Carla's a remarkably intelligent young woman. I think I'll try her hunch about the power station. I'll probably be late. You get that history paper done, okay? Sort
Yeah, she's giving the poor sap hell. Doesn't he deserve it? Sure, I guess. You back me up tonight, Danny. They're gonna need us to make up their minds for them. Have you seen Carla? Amy, do you know where Carla might be? I don't know, maybe at her brother's place? Station, good idea, thanks. Merle, you're always butting in when you're not wanted. This is the second time you showed up here. And that's about all I can take without needing an air sick bag, Danny. Believe me, the last thing I want to do is join this cell party. Look, Carla doesn't want to see you anymore. I mean, you haven't been exactly nice to her lately. So why don't we just take this pretty witty little bike and go home and leave Carla alone. You know that bitch is no good anyway, Paul. She told the school board all those lies. Guess you can't trust a girl like that, can you? Oh! 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 It's bleeding! Oh! Dick! I hold silver! Here's a reverend saying, the confession line is open, and I'm just dying to talk to someone tonight. Gets awful lonely out here, my friends. Now give me a call, huh? The 662-1111. Come on in. Carla, I'm sorry. I should have known Stephanie was behind it all. It's okay. No, I was stupid. You'd never do anything like this. Forget it. It's all right. What happened to you? I wonder if I broke his nose. What? Whose nose? What are you talking about? Danny Pierce. You broke his nose? Hey, it's Morelli the Younger. How's it going, Paul? He just broke Danny's nose. All right. Mild-mannered hero conquers the unconquerable Danny Pierce. I like it. Make a great story, huh, sis? I'm sure. Hey, well, you don't sound too keen. Come on, let's show the guy a little appreciation. I mean, it's not as though we don't know why he did it. Shut up, John. It's flattering, isn't it, having someone fight for you? John, shut up. OK, all right. Hey, how's your dad holding up, Paul? Um, not too well. How long till they unsuspend him? Any idea? No one says, but Dad thinks this is it. He's fired? Probably. Ah, shit. What's he planning to do? He doesn't have his mind on the problem right now. Carla, do you remember when you thought the Vixens might be up at that old schoolhouse up there? He's gone looking for him. You're kidding. Why? If I told you what he told me, you wouldn't believe me. He says that 16 years ago, some other Vixens were here. He fell in love with one. They had an affair, and she had me. That's who my mother was. But I thought your mother was dead, didn't That's what I've always been told, that she died when I was born. But she didn't. She was a vixen. Now that these new ones are here, Dad says she's here too, thinks she brought her. Don't you want to see her? Carla. Now, no offense to your dad, Paul, but I really can't believe your long-lost mother has suddenly come back to life. His last couple of days, it's been a strain. All this suspension business and... Oh, Mr. Morelli's just suddenly cracked. Is that what you think? Where's your romantic soul? <laughs> hey, I gotta get back. You know, this is gonna be a great weekend, gang. I can feel it deep down inside. Let's slow it down now. And let the reverend rock you gently. Mmm, I love this song. Laying in the pile. He's not crazy, is he, Paul? Buzzing like a bubble. Loving that lilac. Come on, tell me the rest of it. Forget it. You'll just think I'm crazy. No, I won't. Tell me. All right. Uh, remember your flying saucers? Yeah. Oh, God. Carla, they're from outer space. He says they're dangerous. The Vixens? What did he mean, dangerous? I don't know. All he said was, if they don't get exactly what they want, they fly into a tantrum. Well, they're not getting everything they want anymore. 
What'll happen? Maybe they have special powers. I don't know. Zap guns? No, I'm serious, Carla. My dad is anyway. You know what this would mean, don't you? What? Paul, you're not thinking. If your mother is from outer space, you're part alien. Do you have special powers? I've never noticed anything out of the ordinary before. You're nuts, Murray. Oh, I am, am I? Are you sure you look exactly like a human? Come on. Take them off. I want to see for myself. You're going to have to prove it Come now. Out, Carla. Undress you. I did that. I made a picture of it and it happened. Then it's true. You do have special powers. I'm an alien? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my. Just by thinking about things, I can make them happen. But you said you only think these thoughts about impure girls. I lied. Mary Jo? That's not my name. I always figured it wasn't. But you are the girl who called herself Mary Jo. Aren't you? I've risen in fame since then. As a matter of fact, I'm a queen, Jack. Yes. Yes, I see you've done very well. I should have had the sense to hang on to you back then. But you've come back. Don't imagine anything like that, Jack. I had no wish to come. It was an intergalactic foul-up in the mail room. I, I, I don't understand. Another accident, don't you see? Another relic of your race falls into the wrong hands and a new generation must see for themselves, must experience and feel and possess the pleasures of the Earth. Oh, yes. I remember you telling me about that the first time. <laughs> when Elvis was on the Ed Sullivan show and millions of Earth viewers saw the top half. And we received the bottom half. We were young and impressionable. How could we have stayed away? And this time? A teen magazine. Delivered to us by mistake. It was disastrous. <laughs> but you came back with them. They couldn't have come alone. They came to find love. I love you. And there is the other thing. What do you mean? You have a son. We will not discuss it. He has no place in my life. Soon we will leave you. Another troop of disappointed girls will disappear into the night. Disappointed? I thought they were having the time of their lives. In one case, you should know firsthand. Oh, that. In any case, they seemed unhappy tonight. I wonder where they've gone. I hope you told them not to expect too much. They'll have to learn the hard way. Nothing I have said could have stopped them from wanting to come. I hope they don't get out of control. There's nothing we can do. Go now, Jack. It's time for you to leave. Will I never see you again? Won't you see your son before you leave? It's better for him if we never meet. Look, Steph, you said they were coming tonight. So where are they? Fucking nose hurts. Now stop whining. It's past the time that, sorry, we're late. <gasps> we had to change. Hey, it's those girls. Well, I never expected you to show up. We like being unexpected. Um, uh, you guys on your way to a Halloween party? No, this one will suit us just fine. Love the water pistols, girls. 
What are you playing at? We tried to be nice. We wanted to be your friends. Well, I would say that you went a little bit further than that. Don't worry about that. We've had enough. I guess playing by the rules doesn't work. This isn't a game for inexperienced players, honey. <laughs> Before we go, maybe we ought to even up the score. Why does she hate us so much? Probably because I beat her out to Jack Morelli. Maybe. Just the way you stole away the rest of the guys. We know you're kind, and we don't want you around here. You don't know as much as you think you do. Well, I know one thing. We're not, not going to stand for this anymore, right? Right. Come on, Steph. You know, what are you going to do? All they wanted was action. Action's all they're going to understand. The only way to get rid of them is to force them out. I wouldn't try anything. Yeah, careful, girls. Those ray guns look pretty deadly. You are stupid people, aren't you? Well... You'll just have to catch us. Well, go on after us! Are we gonna show them it's our place? Let's show them we mean what we say! Come on! Come on! I don't know, that was pretty weird back there, I mean... Oh, great! Don't worry, I'll protect you from the big bad girls. God, where did they escape from? Look at those outfits! I'm looking, I'm looking. Shut up. Hey, you and the Red, I never hear you talk. How come? Maybe your brains are missing. <laughs> yeah, she left them at home with her clothes. She doesn't say much, but I wouldn't underestimate her if I were you. What's the matter, Red? Cat got your tongue? Make her mad like that. Where do you think you're going? You won't get very far, you know. Stop worrying. We wouldn't touch them again for money. Let me tell you something about your boyfriends. About all your boys here. They were such a disappointment. They were all virgins. Do you know Pete couldn't even... You shut up about Pete. And your Steve was almost totally useless. Until I gave him a few lessons. Why you... So you go ahead and take them back. If there's any of you left after tonight. No, wait. <laughs> Here, have some more. Are you trying to get me drunk? What, me? No, no. <laughs> Come on, I baby. I don't know why I go out with you, Pop Williams. I really don't. Oh, because I'm so charming, huh? <laughs> don't bet on it, sucker. <laughs> what do they do when they catch them? <laughs> What's all the stuff doing here? God, look at this. Weird looking. God, what is it, a tomato? Shh. I don't hear anybody anymore. Look at these lowly earth creatures. I guess we've just been wasting our time with them. I told you they were stupid. 
Hey, didn't we miss a couple back there? Oh, we'll get those two later. As for these... Danny, go home and don't say a word. Danny, all right? Yeah, sure. Don't say a word to anyone about what we've seen. They'll never believe us. Just speak to me, buddy. and I'm Father John. Remember this one? Now this is the kind of music that memory is made of. Oh. You up? What? <laughs> oh, God. Guess I got a little carried away last night. You can say that again. Sorry about the car. Uh, will John be mad? Nah, not over this old heap. Will John be mad over anything else? No. <laughs> what about your dad? <laughs> Won't he be shocked? Oh, even if he is, he's not exactly in the position to preach morality. This is a strange medallion. I've always had it. I've never seen it before. Well, you've never seen me with my clothes off before either. <laughs> That's true. Where'd you get it? Does it mean something? I've been wearing it since I was a baby. Yeah, my dad gave it to me way back then. He said my mom left it for me. If I wear it, I, I always have a part of it with me. So I wear it. Nah, probably just a World War special. But at least you left something. Paul, what are you going to do about these powers you have? I don't know. It's too weird to even think about. You going to tell somebody? No. Carla, I don't want anyone at all about this. Not Please don't tell me. Okay, but... Say, I've got something a little weird to report. Eleven students from Mayfield High seem to have disappeared last night. The kids, all juniors and seniors, never came home, and their cars are still sitting by the side of the road where the kids were last seen. Now, I like to party with the best of them, but... Come on, you guys. You got some parents pretty worried. Now, if anyone has any info on the following kids, please contact the sheriff. Amy Dennis, Linda Andrews, Susie Hayes, Those Mike the Rogers, ones that have been getting the vixens upset with them. They were up there last night with Stephanie. They seem to be waiting for something. Oh, God. Oh, my. I guess it just must be harder to turn them right side up. It's just so weird. Huh? No, this whole thing. What am I, Superman? How would I look in a red Mmm, sexy. Oh, funny. No, real funny. Paul, did you notice something about that list of names? Neither Steph or Danny was on it. But they might know something. Carla, hmm? we know something. In fact, we know just about everything. And I think we better tell someone soon. Who could we tell? They'd believe us anyway. We've got to find out what's really happened to those other kids. We already know. The Vixens have something to do with it. And your mother. We could talk to her. Let's go up there. For all I know, my mother could be the creature from the Blue Lagoon. Paul, we've got to do something. Those kids could be dead. She's your mother. You can talk to her. Why would she listen to me? And anyway, what makes you so sure that I even want to talk to her? Yeah. I suppose it would be kind of difficult to meet her. That's not it. I don't know. But wouldn't it be worse if you never got to meet her at all? Yeah. Come on, let's go. We'll probably be zapped.
just came looking for our friends. Why should I know anything about your friends? You brought those girls here. You're one of them. I'm sorry. I doubt there's much chance of ever seeing your friends again. Why? What did you do to them? You must not ask me anymore. There is danger for you here. Leave now before you end up like your friends. The medallion. What about... What about my dad? Your father is fine. Nothing will happen to him. So you know who I am? I don't know what you came here expecting. I wasn't expecting any great outflow of motherly affection. That's not very realistic, is it? I only came to see who you are. To see who I am? Why is that so important after all these years? Because I don't know who I am anymore. I'm not just Mr. Morelli's kid, Paul. My mother's a vixen from outer space. Is that what they're calling us this time? Hardly a dignified description. Or a complete one. Okay, then you tell me the rest. Who are you really? God, what am I a part of? I suppose it would do no harm. Perhaps it will help you to understand. What is it you want to know? About your planet? It's a barren place. But we're comfortable there. Very comfortable. For us, luxury is as easy as thought. But it only makes the isolation more terrible. Isolation? Your father didn't tell you. There are no men on our planet. No men? But how do you... Exactly. How do we? There is a chemical substance in our vegetation that is adaptable to the needs of reproduction. You mate with plants? We have developed very sophisticated techniques. Scientifically perfect. Perfectly boring. Can you blame us for wanting something more? That is why I came here. You were the result. An unheard of being. A male of our race. I guess maybe I do understand things a little better now. I seem a strange creature to your eyes, no doubt. Almost totally weird. Pretty good looking for mother, though. You have inherited the trait of flattery from your father. It's no good. I have nothing to offer you. You were foolish to come here. I guess I was. Oh, yeah, I uh, don't think I'll be needing this anymore. This is John Murray in the Shank of the Evening. It's 636 and we're at 990 on your AM dial. Now, a very special request for a very special friend, Betty. Well, look who's here. Uh, would you mind telling me where you've been all this time? John, we got something to tell you. It's about those kids who disappeared. Yeah, well, you hear what the sheriff found up there near those cars? A bunch of screwy, oversized vegetables. Real cute, you guys. Oh, my God. Look, we weren't with them when whatever it was happened, but it isn't a joke. The Vixens did something to those kids. Really? What could they do? Look, you're going to have to try and believe this. They're from outer space. They have some sort of powers. What's this crap? I'm telling you. For all we know, but the Vixens could have killed them. They have killed them. What? They turned them into those vegetables. I can see it would be pretty easy if you knew how. We know they're aliens because Paul's mother's an alien. And he has special powers. I know. I've seen them. It's true. 
You're trying to pull some kind of crap on my sister, right, Morelli? Well, cut it out. Both of you. These kids' parents wouldn't appreciate the joke. Danny! You with the other guys, how did you escape? Carla, I need to talk to you and brother. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. You must have seen what happened. Did you? You never believe me. Danny, just tell us what you saw. Oh, what are you doing here? I didn't come here to talk to this jerk off. Danny! Look, I'm leaving. Wait a minute. Look, later on. Come back here. I was looking for you last night, Danny. No. Wait. Carla? Help! No, don't. Not that! I missed you. You're a gullible old fool, Pierce. You gonna let these kids get away with a story like that? No. Now you listen to me, Will Brady. It happened to my son, and it'll happen to yours. Yeah, Mr. Brady, you don't know. I was there. I saw it. Go on, Martha. Bring it out here. Show him. <laughs> there. Monsters. That's what's left of my son, Danny. Just a giant pickle. And I say, what am I gonna do about it? What are we all going to do about it? <laughs> Mrs. Andrews, you know, the same thing happened to Linda. How can you pretend that these vixens from outer space aren't dangerous? They're here killing your children. They want to kill me. They'll kill us all! They're right! We all saw those girls. There's nothing like them on Earth. There's Brooke Shields. They did that to my little sister? Worse. She was stepped on afterwards. <laughs> well, I'm going up after him with a shotgun. Yeah! yeah come on. Who else is coming? Yeah, I will. Wait a minute! This is ridiculous! Did... did you know that they tried to force your sons to... to... I can't say it, but they did. Not one of those dead boys was a virgin. It's monstrous. All right, tonight. Let's go. Who else is coming? Governor's office, please hold. Governor's office, please hold. Governor's office, hold on. Governor's office, hold the line. Governor's office, hold the line. Governor, yes, sir. I'll put him on right away, sir. Governor. Yes. The senator on line one. Okay, thanks, sweetheart. Hey, Jim boy, how are you? Yeah, how's the wife and kids? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Say, I got a little favor to ask. It's about this little problem we got down here. What? Yeah, she's fine. Yeah, yeah, they're fine. Yeah. yeah. Now, Jim, boy, you've you got to pay attention here. Things are really backing up on me, and if you boys up in Washington don't do something about it, we're going to have a real panic on our hands. Yeah? Yeah, we tried that. Huh? Well, didn't help. Nobody paid any attention. Now, look, 
Jim boy, this is big. The nation's morality is at stake. There's a million people screaming out here for us to save the home and the hearth and the youth of America. Christ, Jim, I'm talking votes. Yes, votes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jim, I thought you'd see it, my boy, boy. Flash, the unbelievable powers of the aliens have now been confirmed. We've just received word that the town of Springfield has been turned into a giant summer squash. Wait a minute, I, I've just been handed another bulletin. Oh my God, the entire community of Loyal Heights has been turned into a humongous zucchini. What can be done? Scientists are working round the clock to find a solution. Let's listen in as Dr. Boris Butsky, world-renowned vegologist, examines the victims. Boris, surely you don't mean... Yes, I do. And don't call me Boris. Then there's only one thing left to do? Exactly. Get me the Pentagon. In a statement released just moments ago, the president has ordered an all-out assault on the alien stronghold. All civilians are being evacuated from the area. Run for your lives! Jesus Christ. Did you pack my harmonica? It's in your shoes. Oh. John, what if Paul hasn't heard about it? Uh, Carla, everyone's heard about it. You got any room in your bag? John! <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, stop worrying. I'm sure Paul's fine. We gotta get going. Damn these things. Carla. Paul! I can't find my dad. I think he went up there to one of the Dixons. What? How do you know? The car's not there. Where else could he have gone? You sure? John, can't we do something? What? Well, we gotta get going. All right. All right, get in the car. Hurry up. Are you sure you packed my harmonica? Nobody sit on my harmonica. Can't we hurry? Okay, but there better be a rock and roll heaven. If any citizens are still not out of the danger zone, they urge to make all possible haste. Proceed by all available arterials to the nearest county line where National Guards will direct civilians to temper. up in an abandoned schoolhouse in the hills outside of Mayfield. As the last of the civilians leave the area to the sound of bomber squadrons thundering overhead, all forces are converging on the alien stronghold for a showdown with these depraved fixings. Hey, wasn't that Steph's car back there? She's going in the right direction. At least somebody's got brains around here. John. Carla. Haven't you been listening to anything I've been saying? You have to get out of here, too. This whole hillside's about to be blown right out of the world. The girls are safely out of it by now. There's no hurry. No hurry? I don't understand why you came to warn us. It's such great danger to yourself. Is it so difficult to understand? Will you always be convinced that all men are absolutely evil? Which is what those girls of yours now believe. They didn't see any evidence to the contrary. Could it be they just didn't know where to look? It's true. They were not prepared for the complexities of human courtship, let alone human emotions. But how could I prepare them when I myself will never understand this thing you call love? Oh, my dear. I know I'm a pretty rotten advertisement for men in general. It was cruel of me. 
to leave you when you loved me 16 years ago. Let me make it up to you now. You must get away from here. That's all that matters to me now. Oh, that's just great, Dad. Paul, she's the cause of this whole mess in the first place. No, no, uh, son, I explained. Okay, so she didn't abandon us, so you sent her away. She didn't have to leave. Well, she, she came back. Yeah, she came back all right with her own personal hit squad of walking vegematics. If it weren't for her, we wouldn't be standing out here waiting for the fallout. And now you've come all the way out here to warn her to save herself. And there's not enough time for us to get out. Dad, you're hopeless. Paul, I never wanted to put you in danger. You shouldn't have come up here after us. Look, I couldn't drive away knowing she'd be killed. I still love her. No. He's right, Jack. I have made a mess. And there's very little time left. Have you discovered the power you have within you? I sort of. I can't do it anymore. I've, I've been trying and it doesn't work. This trogatism is the key. It can unlock the part of your mind which is like mine. Take it. Use it. It is the only gift I can give you. Now I must make an attempt. I may fail. Wait! Goodbye. I wish things could have been different. What are you going to do? What I can. Take me with you. I can't let you go alone again. Dad! So that's the Trogatis. Oh, was she right? Can that really save us? I don't know. There's no place like home. 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 